should Christians swear and curse? Is it okay for them to biblically, morally, what's the deal? So, can Christians curse? Of course they can. And they do. Should they though? That's the question. Should Christians, knowing what our morals are, knowing what the Bible says, should Christians swear and curse? That's what we're gonna get into. First things first, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, please like it. And if you dislike it, then dislike it. One thing I wanna point out real quick before we get started is thank you for everybody who donates through PayPal right now to help me continue doing this. Most of you know that I quit my job recently to be able to pursue this full time. So now I decided to do something different. I've made a Patreon account, which is a much more fun way for people to support financially creators, uh, whether it's YouTube or music or whatever. Um, I, can, I can make like rewards and prizes and stuff like that for people who donate to help me be able to do this at all. So I'll leave a link in the description to the Patreon account that I made. And if I didn't have the support of you guys financially, then this would stop. I don't have the time for it if I don't make enough money to pay my bills and eat. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And let's talk about something awkward. Please watch the full video before commenting. I swear, it's, ugh. most of the annoying comments are people who just sit at the edge of their seat and wait for me to say something that they don't like and then they go and puke all over the comment section. And all I end up having to do is I just reply to it and I say, please watch the whole video. Because I either answer their question or I end up agreeing with them later in the video. But they're total jerks in the comments because they didn't watch the whole video. If you don't plan on watching the entire video, then don't comment because it's just gonna make you look stupid. I'm trying to help you. So wait, stick it out, watch the video, and then talk crap to me afterward. What are curse words? What is swearing? These are the things that you have to be able to answer before you can condemn someone for doing it or before you can say that it's unbiblical or immoral. You have to be able to say what is swearing even, what is cursing. Words only mean what we as a society decide that they mean. The F word is not a bad word. We've decided that it has negative connotations. We've made it bad. It's not bad. Words are not inherently bad. If I went to Pakistan and I screamed the F word walking down the street and they didn't speak English, none of them would be offended, none of them would be butthurt, none of them would be shielding their children from hearing it because it doesn't mean anything to them. It's just a word. So words are not inherently bad. What the intention in using them is, and what the context in using them is what makes them profanity. In the first century, there were other words in Greek that were considered profanity. And we're gonna talk a little bit about them. We're not gonna talk about the Greek because most of you don't care to learn Greek. So we're just gonna talk about how it translates to English and what that whole deal is. They had profanity in Greek. And a lot of you used epistles from Paul Actually, I think every person on Instagram, and there were over 100 comments, were all people using epistles that Paul wrote to condemn swearing from a biblical stance. Why I think that's funny is because Paul swore in scripture. Paul used what was considered profanity in the first century in the Bible. His epistles contain profanity. In Philippians, Galatians, as well as uh, Colossians, Paul uses first century words that in the first century were considered profanity. They were considered bad words. And beyond that, Paul was a person who in Galatians told people to chop their penises off because they were being legalistic about circumcision. Paul was not a boy scout. So I don't know why you guys are trying to use him to try to make your point against cursing because he is not the person to use. 
He had a rough life. He was a murderer. He'd been in prison. He was not a Boy Scout. He swore and he told people to chop their penis off. Not the right person to use for this argument. Scripture does, however, say that we should speak with love and edification, as well as a bunch of other super cool biblical words that we love to spew out even though we don't really know what they mean. Scripture is very clear about building people up with our words, not breaking them down. It's very clear that the way we speak matters. And usually it pertains to how we speak to other people. That's important to keep in mind. Is that, especially the verse that a lot of you guys threw out of Ephesians, is not referring to saying the F word, or the D word, or whatever. That's not what it's talking about. He's talking about building people up with your words, or breaking them down with your words hurting people or edifying people. Those are the differences that's being talked about in Ephesians 4, I think is the one that you guys used a lot. Now, all that being said, relax. Knowing that culturally, the F word, the F, you know, whatever, um, these words in our culture are considered bad. So as Christians, as people who are supposed to set an example, are supposed to be set apart, should we swear, even though there's cursing in the Bible and even though all the other stuff we talked about, is it something that we really should be doing? Is it beneficial in any way? What I'm going to argue is that swearing doesn't really matter. How, when, where, and why you swear is what matters. Your intention, the context, who you're saying it to, and who you're around. The one thing I'm pretty big on, I don't swear in front of children, ever. Because because kids don't understand. And because most parents are, just aren't okay with it because we consider these words bad in our culture. Most people aren't awake enough to understand that the words don't really mean anything, they just know that they're bad words. So they're bad words. So you have to respect that. Even if you believe differently like I do, that swearing doesn't really mean anything. You have to understand and respect other people's views. So never swear in front of children, it's not okay. Because they're being told their entire lives that these words are bad, don't say these words. That they have horrible negative connotations attached to them. So as a Christian, no, you don't swear in front of children. Because in their minds it's bad, so you're offending them and you're damaging them. So regardless of what you believe about swearing, there are times, places, and people that you should not swear in front of. Regardless of your belief, it doesn't matter. Because you have to consider other people. Know your room. That phrase is applicable for all sorts of stuff. Swearing is one of them. Know the room you're in. If I'm in a room with me and my buddy, and we're comfortable around each other, and neither of us is offended, if one of us says the S word or whatever, then I don't really filter that. He's not offended by it. I'm not offended by it. So it's not hurting anybody. Because the words aren't bad. How you use them is bad. Different scenario. If I'm going to talk to church planners about the church that we're trying to put together right now to plant in Chicago, I am not going to swear in a meeting or something. I'm not going to because I don't know those people. I don't know them. I have no rapport with them. I have no relationship with them. They could be totally blown away if I dropped, you know, any word. So I'm not going to swear in front of them. You have to know what room you're in and act and speak accordingly. And I feel like that's something people should just know, but I don't see, I just don't think they do. So understand what your room you're in if you're going to swear. If that's something that you do, because most of us swear, whether you want to admit it or not, most of us do. And most of the time it's, you know, with your spouse or with your best friend or whatever, where there's people not around where it's just you guys who have a relationship, who understand where nobody's offended, there is nothing wrong with that. You cannot condemn somebody for swearing in a situation where nobody's being hurt because the words don't mean anything. Then a lot of people said, well, you know, I feel really convicted not to say the F word. Or, or people pick and choose like, I'm okay with these words, but I'm not okay with these words. It's like, no, that makes no sense. That's fine that you feel that way, that's totally fine. You know, live your life, boo-boo. But you can't put that on anybody else. If you're okay with the D word and the S word, but not the F word, and you make other people 
abide by your moral code of these are okay and this one's not, you're being You don't get to pick and choose which words are okay. None of the words mean anything. If you feel convicted, then don't swear. And make sure the people around you who are in relationship with you where everybody's very comfortable, make sure they know that you don't want them swearing around you. That's just be an adult. Make that clear that you have a conviction and make sure that the people around you understand that you're convicted that way so that they can support your decision. Likewise, don't say that your convictions are biblically backed because they're not. They're your personal convictions. But I would also really think if you're being convicted or if you're feeling guilt because a lot of people get those wires crossed all the time. Guilt in this scenario is you feeling bad because society says the words are bad or your church says the words are bad. Not because they are and not because the Holy Spirit's really convicting you. That's guilt. That's not conviction. Now, if you understand everything about what we've just talked about and you still just don't feel right about it, you don't like it, then that would be conviction. But you have to keep that to yourself. You don't get to push your convictions on other people. So, all said and done. Should we swear? There's no reason to. There really isn't. You can't really justify swearing. But you also can't justify condemning anybody for swearing. Because the words have been labeled as bad and people do get offended by them, as a Christian, you should not swear around anybody who could possibly be offended. Meaning around people you don't know, don't swear, period. That would be the respectful thing to do. If you're alone with your best friend, you guys have been together, been friends since you were both in diapers and nobody gets offended if you drop an F-bomb, that's your prerogative, man. And nobody can tell you that it's wrong because it's just not. We also covered that Paul swears in the Bible, that Paul told men to chop their penises off. The Bible is not a fairy tale book. It's not a Girl Scout book. There's a lot of gruesome stuff in the Bible, but people like to pick and choose the cute little things that they can put on their wall and ignore the rest, ignore the brutal stuff. You don't get to do that. You also don't get to take verses that are talking about something else and attribute them to swearing. That's not what they're about. You don't get to do, you don't get to decide what the Bible say. It says what it says. Take it or leave it. The last thing just to throw in there to consider is that swearing changes from culture to culture. And that adds validity to the idea that I talked about earlier that the words really don't mean anything. It's the context, it's, it's how you use it, it's your intention. The words aren't bad. Please, for the love of God, the words are not bad. So don't say that they are. Please, how you use them is what matters. Don't break people down with your words, swearing or not swearing. That's the moral of the story. Don't disrespect people who don't like swearing. Be respectful. That's your responsibility, Christian or not. So I love you guys dearly. Um, next week, uh, one of the people who donated on Patreon the first person who donated the donated towards one of the awards that I had on Patreon, which was that they got to pick the next video that I did. So she bought it. Um, so she got to pick the topic. I'm not going to say what it is. I'll announce it later on Instagram. But it is one that a lot of you guys have been asking for from the topic list. So it should be good, and uh, it should um it should hit a lot of things that are very pertinent to our culture right now as far as marriage goes. It is a marriage topic. So get ready for that bad boy.